And for more on Green Book's global success and the movie industry, I'm joined from New York by Max Alvarez. He's a film historian and a writer on world cinema culture. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Rochelle. It's a pleasure. So what was your reaction to the Green Book's movie success in China? It's quite astonishing. I believe since February 22nd, it has earned more than $68 million U.S. in China. And it certainly proves that a dramatic film that is not a franchise film or a special effects driven film, but a human drama from the United States, a film that we would consider a regional subject matter, could break out and become an international phenomenon. Now, we did see a lot of controversy in the U.S., but it, we didn't seem to see that in China. How do you respond to that argument that these types of films oversimplify or perhaps downplay real historic issues? Well, I think it was, it was fascinating in the segment we just saw where uh, one of the gentlemen was talking about the class distinctions in Green Book. Yes, it was about race, but it also addressed social class. And I think international audiences are more willing to pick up on that than perhaps audiences in the United States. There is always an issue when you're dealing with a with true life story that the matter is going to be simplified. It sometimes has to be simplified for reasons of length so that the audience will be able to understand it easier. Sometimes it's politically motivated, but oftentimes audiences treat that as the official story and that's where the mistake begins. People should always want to learn more about the story after seeing the film or the TV series. And some people definitely say that, that this is a good starting point. Um, now, what are some other Western movies with surprising popularity uh, abroad? Well, if we look at some of the Academy Award winning adult films, films that are smaller dramas than some of some other international blockbusters, you do see cases where films have broken out to audiences m bigger than they were in the United States. Films such as Moonlight or Spotlight, 12 Years a Slave, The King's Speech, which we think of as a very British film, it's, it deals with the English language, was a monster hit internationally about nine years ago, major hit in Japan. So it proves that there's an audience out there for films that deal with conflict and struggle, discrimination, people people just trying to get through in life uh, battling tremendous obstacles and not always special effects. Now have we also seen any examples of movies that have had crossover appeal in the other direction say from from China or other foreign language films that have done well in the US and, and other Western audiences? There have been some very interesting times in, in the U.S. cultural history where that has happened. In the early 70s, for example, the Hong Kong action films of Bruce Lee and others did very well in our urban centers in the United States. In the 1990s, Japanese animation had a cult following here. In the 2000s, there were the J-horror films, horror pictures like The Grudge and, and other films that had cult followings. And then you had breakout hits like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and my favorite example is Zhang Yimou's Hero, which Miramax Films opened wide in 2004 in over 2,000 theaters in the U.S. They didn't tell people it was in Mandarin, and it still made $18 million opening weekend. So it can happen. It just takes a lot of initiative and a lot of funding. Now, as we know, shelling out millions of dollars to make a movie doesn't always pay off. Um, but are there mm. certain themes or storylines that better lend themselves more easily to global success? A magic formula, if you wish. Uh, so the question was about uh, are there certain formulas for global success yes. that are more reliable? Well, we're seeing with... <laughs> Since 70, according to the Motion Picture Association, 71% of the market outside of the U.S. and Canada, uh, that's where Hollywood is getting its revenue from, the international market, which accounts for 71%. And in Hollywood's percent, in, in percept, perception, rather, that means special effects driven films, computer animation films that can be easily dubbed into other language, films based on franchises, superhero pictures. I think it's an unfortunate, an unfortunate simplification of what an audience is looking for. Green Book demonstrates they want to see other things as well. But Hollywood tends to go for very visual, easily translatable products. Now, how are other major film industries in other countries, for example, Bollywood in India, Nollywood in Nigeria, mm -hmm. etc., how do they go about garnering more global success beyond their borders? 
Well, their challenges are to try to recreate the infrastructure that Hollywood has, the technical and marketing infrastructure. But still, their markets are going to be limited to similar cultures or countries where there's a language similarity. It's a lot harder for a Bollywood film or a film from some, an Asian country to have as big an impact, say, in the United States as, say, a British film might be. So one option is to do more co-production with Hollywood, which we've definitely seen in cases like the Transformers, the fourth Transformers film, which was a China Paramount co-production. So co-productions are one way to try to broaden the reach, but sometimes the culture gets lost in that international translation. All right, Max Alvarez, film historian and writer on world cinema culture. Thanks so much.